So hey, welcome to the 1010 Movement. You're here with myself, Tony V, and this video is specifically about saving planet Earth. Now, this is saving planet Earth 2, and actually at the end of this video, you will see pop up here, saving planet Earth 1, which will bring you up to date with what we talked about in the first video. But as a quick recap, it is with no doubt at all that the human race right now is driving towards and very likely to smash into um, collectively um, with all the other flora and fauna on the planet a metaphorical brick wall and what it's going to take to prevent that and make us drive away and miss the brick wall is a concerted effort from you know a huge chunk of human beings that are going do you know what i want to be involved in this because I don't want my children's children and possibly their children to be the receivers of driving in to that wall. Now, obviously there's lots of stuff going on, the governments and everything are doing stuff to make a difference and to prevent us driving into that wall, but actually that's looking like that's not gonna be enough. What it's gonna take is a chunk of people to put their hands up, as I said, and go, I want to be involved in that. And it's a tad shy, of, it's a tad shy of eight billion people living on the planet right now, and it's gonna take something around just under a billion people to go, I'm in, and um, I want to you know, prevent this disaster, this cataclysmic disaster from happening and save our beautiful planet Earth. So, basically the 1010 movement comes at this from a completely different way. Let the governments and everyone carry on what they're doing, it's all good, yeah? But what really needs to happen is for the human race to change the way it thinks and operates en masse. Now, as I say, at the moment, about 4% of people are thinking in a completely different way to the other 96%. And what it's going to take is about another 6% of people to join together with that 4%. And then as we all start to think in new ways, then what happens is as you think differently, you act differently, you behave differently. Everything you do, you do in a different way. So I'm gonna give you a bit of an example. So imagine having a bottle of champagne and a bottle, same size, of still water. Now, if we shake up the bottle of champagne and take the cork off, obviously we've seen it many times with Formula One racing, what happens to the champagne? Well, it all shoots out the bottle and goes everywhere, doesn't it? Now, if you did that with a bottle of still water, shake it like crazy and open the top, what happens is nothing. Now, I always say to people, there are two of you in there. There is what I call the unconscious reactive human, which is like the bottle of champagne. So when something outside of us happens, we are like that bottle of champagne ready to explode and we become very reactive. And we do various things which are very clear and easy to identify. So I'm gonna ask you now, do you know anyone? I always go, put your hand up. If you know anyone who ever worries about anything, yeah? Do you know that person well? Do you know anyone that gets anxious about things? Do you know that person well? Do you know somebody that gets a bit frustrated now and then? Do you know them very well? What about anger? Do you know anyone that gets angry at all? What about depression? Do you know anyone? There's, believe it or not, in the UK alone, about 20% of the population are clinically um, uh, depressed and, and on some sort of medication to help sort them out, yeah? Now, these behaviours, these experiences, these emotions like worry, doubt, anxiety, uh, frustration, anger, depression, all of these things, and there's many, many more, of course, that we could list, are basically because we are operating like the bottle of champagne. We are operating in a reactive way and we're sort of out of control. So if something happens outside of us, something not good, somebody, often it's in a person, some person says something, boom, off comes the champagne cork, you know, and we all go very reactive. And whatever our pattern normally is, so if, we, if, we, if something happens outside of us and we, generally speaking, um, have got sort of anger in our body, um, then we will respond angrily, yeah? If we get anxious about it, we are going to get anxious about it. So anxious people get anxious, angry people get angry. So what we need to do is we need to identify our own pattern. 
So what's that all got to do with saving planet Earth? Well, if enough people could become aware of these patterns of emotionality, the patterns of thinking, the patterns of um, behaviour that happen when situations and circumstances happen, then this is the collective way that the bulk of the humans are operating. And this causes everything from fallouts in your family or with your relationship, for example, fallouts with your kids, fallouts with your parents, fallouts with your next door neighbour, you know, and it ends up, it, it, it culminates at a big level, um, if we chunked it right up, to countries falling out and having a war. How many wars are going on right now? You know, these are basically people who have, are being very, very reactive to the point where they start killing each other. So, a high percentage, like 96% of the people of the planet operate in that way without even being aware that that's what they're doing. So if we're able to look at ourselves and go, hey, yes, I want to help save planet Earth, and if that's what it's going to take, let the governments do their thing. If it's going to take me to lose my anger, lose my anxiety, lose my depression, whatever negative emotion it is that you carry around with you, if you were to lose that, what happens is unbelievable. What, what really happens is the champagne turns into this beautiful bottle of still water because inside of every human there is this beautiful still place. Now only as I say about 4% of the population of the planet right now know that and live in that place. And that's why we need to get more people to live like that because these people are not reactive. So when things happen outside of them they don't have these negative emotions come. They manage to control their state. And what happens is these people make radically different decisions to these people, okay? They make more considered decisions. They make more conscious decisions. When things happen, they consider the consequences of their actions and their behaviours. They consider every part of it. They consider other people, they consider the planet, they consider, consider all the flora and the fauna, whereas these people are very active. These are the people that are going, yeah, they're more, they're more focused on themselves. They're more like, okay, I need to get this, or I need to get this. They're more material world. So, and of course, the problem, part of the problem is that the, the news media promote to these people, yeah? And they stir them up all the time. So it's not easy in the modern world to lose this and turn into this. But if you want to make a difference and stop us from hitting that, that brick wall and start to move us away from that brick wall, then it's maybe now is the time. If you've got your hand up and go, right, okay, I can see that I do some of that reactive stuff. And how would my life be different if I didn't do that? If I didn't do that and I stay calm and caring and giving and trusting and loving and my life became joyous and happy and fulfilled and all those lovely words, not this anger and depression and all of that. There's these two distinctly different parts of you where you can learn to stop doing this and start doing this. And when we start doing this en masse, we're definitely going to miss the brick wall. So. That's really my very simple message here in uh, Saving the Planet 2, is to look to go, yes, am I being reactive or am I super calm? And what decisions do I make when I'm reactive versus if I could be calm, how would my life be different? Because all the decisions in our life would be, as I say, more considered. Now, um, up here is going to appear, um, you know, the, the number one. And down here is uh, an hour long video which talks about this. And, you know, I encourage you to put an hour aside and go, right, let me watch this video when it pops up and really start to understand where do I live? Am I over here or am I over here? What does it take for me to move and start to live over here? Because I promise you, if we start to get to close on a billion people, were able to move from here to here, we would miss the wall. And the effect on the, the other people, more and more people will start to pour over here. And this is a proven theory um, that that would happen. If enough people start to move over here, then these people would start to follow them, yeah? So, um, if you're new to the 1010 movement, then um, welcome here, and I'd love it if you would press the old subscription button and the notification bell, and then we will notify you when any new videos are going up. 
We generally put two videos up a week, plus we do a live every Saturday night at 7 p.m. So please feel free to join in that. If you press the subscription button, it'll pop up saying we go in live and it's an hour long uh, chat show with myself and my beautiful wife, Nikki B. Generally, we're talking about intimate relationships because intimate relationships is where this sort of stuff, if your relationship world's not going well, it's generally because you're over here, not over here. So we give, you know, live tips. We, you know, join in with the audience. It's great fun. So Saturday night, seven o'clock, get that in your diary and uh, see what you make of that. So that's it from me, Tony B from the 1010 Movement. I'll see you on the next video, which will be number three in the series. Bye for now.